This is a pre-tutorial video on the basic concepts of statistical inference. It's for the MED 1022 population health students ready for the biostatistics tutorial. This is an illustrative example. So the explanation in the textbook on pages 69 to 72 hopefully makes more sense. In this particular case, I'm defining the population as everyone about, which is about 15,000 people who were in six public hospitals in Victoria having cardiac surgery between 2001 and 2006. The data source is the Cardiac Surgery Database, the Australian Society of Cardiac and Thoracic Surgeons. So what I'm doing is I'm taking samples of various sizes from this population for illustrative purposes. In the textbook, they took weights for one sample of size 10. The actual population, in this case of cardiac surgery patients, is quite large, so we can't measure everyone. What I'm doing well, what we do in practice is you take a sample to estimate the population mean. But each sample would have a slightly different mean because it's a sample, this mean is called the sample mean. So there's some error in this estimate. What I've done is using the stats package called Stata, I've taken five samples each of size 10 from the cardiac surgery database. As you can see, the mean of each of the groups and the standard deviation of each of the groups is slightly different. In sample four, there's a weight of 57 and two weights of 129. So the mean is 80.6, but the standard deviation is 30.4. Compare that to sample 2. The standard deviation is 15.7, the mean is 71.7. If you take the mean of these five sample mean weights, you get 80.46. What about if you consider the entire cardiac surgery database. There's just under 15,000 patients. The overall mean is 79.4 kilograms. The overall standard deviation is 16 kilograms. So how does the distribution of these means vary? What I did was using the cardiac surgery database and the stats package called SATA, I selected a sample of a particular size. For example, a size of 20. I wrote some code, so I didn't have to do this over and over again. I wrote some code to calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. This code also enabled me to save this information into a new data set. I repeated this process many times, 1000 to be exact. And then I opened up the new dataset file and I drew a histogram of all of the 1000 sample means of the weight. This showed that as the sample size increases, the spread of the sample mean decreases. This means that the standard error decreases and the precision of the sample mean increased. So here's the graph. In the top left corner, you've got a thousand samples of size 20. The sample means ranged anywhere from 70 to 90 kilograms. Then I took a thousand samples each of size 50. Now the spread of the sample mean weight ranges from about 73 to about 85. 
Now, on the bottom, there's a thousand samples of size 250 and a thousand samples of size 500. Both of these are on the same scale. For the size of 250, the range was from 76 to 82. For the samples of size 500, the range was from just under 78 to about 82. So these two graphs in particular show how when you increase the sample size, it did become more precise and the error or the standard error also decreased. Here is the standard error formula. The standard error formula is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. What we've just been doing is we've been increasing the sample size. So we've been increasing the number we've been dividing by. This has shown that the standard error is decreased when n, or the sample size, is large. You can also decrease the standard error if the standard deviation is small. So the observations and variation of the observations isn't as much. On the other hand, the standard error is increased when you've got large variability in your sample, a large standard deviation, or if you've got a small sample size. Hopefully now you've watched this video on an example of the basic concepts of statistical inference. The example mentioned in the textbook will make more sense.